Welcome to this Arnold Culliford tutorial for modern daily knitting on creating pockets. This tutorial is part of a series to accompany the patterns in MDK field guide number 17, Lopi. All of the patterns in this field guide have been designed by the amazing Mary Jane Muckleston. Today's tutorial will show you how to insert the pocket back and how to sew the pocket back down in order to complete your pocket. I'm using the construction that Mary Jane Mucklestone uses for the destination pullover, which makes pockets like this. But you could add pockets to any garment using this method. To make it easier for you to see what's happening, I'm demonstrating this technique on a flat swatch. But in the actual garment, the destination pullover, then you will obviously be working in the round, but all of the steps are going to be exactly the same. Your first job is to work a pocket back that is the size that you want your finished pocket to be. This pocket back has been worked in plain stocking stitch, but you could add a stranded motif or texture or anything you like. You're going to leave a long tail of yarn when you finish knitting your pocket back so that you can use that tail to sew down the pocket back onto the body of the garment. The next task is to work the cast off row, which is going to be positioned at the top of the pocket. The cast off stitches will make the pocket opening and you need to cast off the same number of stitches as you have in your pocket back. So my pocket back has 20 stitches, so I've cast off 20 stitches here. You're now going to knit until you come to those cast off stitches. And once you've come to the opening with the cast off stitches, you're then going to pick up your pocket back. And if you haven't already, you're going to slip those stitches onto a spare needle. And all you're going to do is knit straight across them. That first stitch will be a bit loose, but don't worry, you can tighten it up later. Once you've worked across the pocket back stitches, you can set aside that spare needle. And then you're going to return to your garment stitches. And literally all you do is knit straight on to the stitches that were at the end of the cast off section. So here's the cast off stitches and we're now working on the stitches the other side of the opening. At the end of your row or round, it should look like this. So you've now got main colour stitches all the way along and your pocket back is positioned behind the garment fabric. If you happen to have it pulled through to the front, you just have to tuck it, tuck it back behind and it'll sit nicely there. And here's how it looks on the wrong side of the fabric. You've got the pocket back lying over the garment fabric. Once you've finished the pocket back insertion row, you carry on work on your garment as per the instructions. And once you've completed your garment, it's now time to sew down the pocket back. Here's the wrong side of the fabric. And this is the long tail that we left when we finished working our pocket back. Now you may find that the first stitch here is a little bit big where you've worked it. So the first thing to do is just to tug on the tail and make sure that that stitch is the same size as the other stitches next to it. Once you've done that, you're going to thread your tail onto a tapestry needle. The secret to seaming is consistency. And what I mean by that is that we're going to be joining a stitch on the pocket back to a stitch on the garment and we want to make sure that we're working into the same column of stitches each time so that they're matched neatly and we end up with everything straight. Obviously if you stretched out this side more than that side you'd end up with a pocket with a wonky bottom which wouldn't be ideal. 
So the first thing to do is to identify which column of stitches you want to work into. Now it's slightly easier on the garment side because the stitches are in the middle of the fabric and so they tend to be a little bit more consistent anyway. So if you look here where the pocket back was joined in, this yellow smile shape on the pearl bump here is the final pocket back stitch. And so if we look next to it, there's a grey smile pearl bump there and that's the column that I want to work into. So what I'm looking to do is to join, that one's already joined, but then find the next smile section. So that's a frown one. So that next smile one is in here, hiding behind. And then above it is there. And we're looking all the way up the fabric to keep sewing into the smile portion of the pearl bump on the same column of stitches. Now you can do that by eye as you sew. The only slight downfall with that is that as you're attaching the pocket back to the fabric it gets a little bit distorted and it can become a bit more tricky to make sure that you're working into the same column each time. So you might find it helpful to add some waste yarn as a guide. This is a completely optional step but if you'd like to add some waste yarn all you need to do is to sew into alternate rows of the fabric just so that you've got a visual line to work to. So there was the first smile pearl bump next to the pocket back. So we'll go into that one, although we don't need to join that stitch. We'll then skip this next one and go into the one above it. And we're going to keep doing that, making sure all the time that we're working into the same column of stitches. And you can see that just having that is going to just make it that bit easier to ensure that you don't drift across and get into a muddle with where you're meant to be joining your pocket back. I counted my rows of my pocket back earlier and I have 19. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I need to do a couple more so that I've got 19 rows marked out on the garment body as well and that's just going to help us to keep lined up but as I say it's totally optional if you want to just do it by eye as you go that's fine too. You can do the same on the pocket back as well. Now this is a little trickier sometimes to work out which stitch you should be going into so let me show you how I do it. So if I'm going into the smile again there's the first yellow loop where it joined the body and then we're going to skip the next one and then here is the one after that. Now the next smile is somewhat hidden. There's the frown and the smile's just there so we're skipping that one and we're going to go through the one above, skip and the one above. And again, this is just going to help us to make sure that we're working into the same part of the stitch in the same column of stitches each time. And it'll just help the seaming process along. So there we've added waste yarn to both sides. And again, optional, but you might find it helpful. Now we're ready to start seaming. So the first smiles here are already joined and we can see our yarn is coming out of the smile that's behind the waist yarn there and so we just need to join that to the smile that's behind the waist yarn on the garment body. So we're just going to go through that pearl bump. Okay. The next one we're going to join is the one on the pocket back that the waist yarn went through. And then on the garment body, the one that the waist yarn went through. I've purposefully used a smooth cotton waist yarn that I won't catch with my blunt tapestry needle. We don't want to have to, to cut it out later. We want to be able to pull it out. Now I go back onto the pocket back side and I'm looking for the smile part of the stitch that's under the waist yarn here. 
there's the frown and the yawn coming out from underneath it is just there. Doesn't look like much of a smile, but that's where it is. And then we're going through the smile under the waist yarn on the garment body. Okay, I'm not pulling it too tight at the moment. I'm just going to do that bit by bit as I go. I've reached the corner of my pocket back and it's all neatly lined up. So the next job to do is to remove these waist yarn guides and they should just pull out very easily. So that, as you can see, is all neatly joined down that side. And if we have a look on the right side of the fabric, there's a little bit of a ridge because obviously the fabric thickness changes, but it's nice and consistent and it's not, uh, nothing's peeking through on the right side. So that's great. We're now going to join the cast on edge of the pocket back to the body and we're going to be working a longer row of stitches this time. So here I find it relatively easy to see um, which stitch to work into. So I'm going to take on this cast on edge. I'm going to be working into the frown loops each time. So you can see it nicely here. There's a frown and there's a smile. There's a frown and there's a smile. So I'm going to work into each of these frown loops and that's what I'm going to be joining to my pocket back. So I'm not going to bother putting a guide in for that, but I think I will just run one along the garment. So I work out where, which row of stitches I'm going to be joining the bottom of the pocket to. So looking carefully at the corner here, we've joined this row to the pocket back. So this row is joined. So this row of stitches is the next one. So I'm going to go in and out through alternate stitches all the way along the same row. So when I look at it this way round, it's the smile part of the stitch that I'm going into and I'm going into every other one. So here's the next smile. I'm skipping that one and I'm going to go into the next one. There's the next smile. I'm skipping that and I'm going into the one after. And I've just worked like that all the way along just to make a little bit of a reminder guide so that I can see where I should be staying lined up with as I join the bottom of my pocket back. All right, I'm all marked up, ready to go. It's optional though, you don't need to mark it if you don't want to. So my yarn's coming out of the pocket back and I'm going to be taking the smile bump that is behind the waist yarn here. So it's this one here. So I'm going to go through that smile bump and then I'm going to go through the frown part of the cast on edge that's just here that's next to it. And now I'm going through the smile part of the body and the next frown from the cast on edge. Next smile from behind the waist yarn and the next frown from the cast on edge. And we're just going to work along matching those as we go. Smile. I've now joined all the way along that cast on edge and so I just need to remove the waste yarn which again just pulls out and that leaves it neatly joined on the wrong side and if we check the right side of the fabric again it's pretty invisible along there. There's there's the ridge, but you can't really see it. It's nice and tidy on the right side. 
Another thing to just keep an eye on while you're seaming is your yarn. If it becomes untwisted, it will be um, much less strong and so you might accidentally break it as you're pulling it through the stitches. So it's worth just having a look at it every so often and it, if it looks like it's untwisting a bit, then just simply add a little bit of twist back in and now that's much stronger and is much less likely to break. All we need to do now is seam the final side of the pocket. This is the tail from the cast on edge. I'm just going to leave that and weave it in later. And we're just looking again to identify which column of stitches we want to work into. And then we're going to make sure we sew into the same one each time. It's exactly the same way as we did on the first side. And again, you can add some guide threads if you'd like to or you can just do it by eye as you go. So I'm working into a smile on this side of the body and a frown on the pocket back. So obviously we're looking at the work the other way up from how we were on the other side. Carry on until you reach the very top corner. We've now reached the top corner. All that remains now is to weave in our ends. I'm going to weave in the yellow back onto the yellow back of the pocket flap. Just working diagonally across. A few rows and then I always come back in the opposite direction. That change of direction really helps to anchor the end. Just a few stitches back in the other direction and give the fabric a tug to make sure that it's that your end isn't going to be making a mess of the tension and then you can just trim it leaving a little end so that it won't pop through to the right side. I like to leave a little tab so that it stays on the wrong side where it's meant to be. So we just need to finish weaving in our ends now and there's our finished pocket. We just need to finish weaving in our ends now and there's our finished pocket. The stocking stitch edge curls down nicely, giving that little peak of the contrast colour, which is very attractive. I hope now you'll feel confident adding pockets to all your garment projects. It's actually very straightforward to do and you can keep all your treasures in them. We have lots more tutorials, hints and tips over on our website. Do click the link up here to go and visit and have an explore. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you're sure not to miss our next video tutorial. Just use the button here. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye bye.